there we go. This is how far we got yesterday. I think, you know, deserve a celebration. Very nice. So, yeah, today I'd like to see if I can add some decorative buttons and some top stitching to this. And, of course, most importantly, the the sharing at the back. So I, I'm, I, don't, I don't really know where I will start doing that. I don't think I want to go and do the whole back. Just the patch in the in the middle here so like from here just have this whole thing or maybe even try the whole uh, the whole back i don't know what it's going to look like we're going to try all these things and we'll just you know figure which one's the best one for us so there's there's a bit of fitting issue at the top going on here as well so this could probably be done uh, better but if we just design this whole thing as a as having slight sharing it'll it might it might look good i don't know no worry steve we'll be here and the way to do this is to have a look at the back piece namely this and ah this has got a curvature at the top i'll see what happens if i go and start at the bottom and put internal lines here evenly spaced to the top that's going to be exciting <laughs> it's probably not the way we're supposed to do it but let's try and maybe I don't know, maybe four centimeters apart. Maybe maybe no, actually maybe 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 six six centimeters apart. And what happens at the top? Oh, that happens at the top. Oh, interesting. I'm not sure if we need sharing there. Could also make it less like this. We could try that, or even four, and then get another get an additional line here. Maybe we'll try that. Let's try that. This could be totally terrible, but as I say, you got to be in it to win it. Is that what they say? <laughs> so with all these lines selected, I am short of an, oh, there it is, elastic option. Elastic on, segment length, segment length is variable, that's cool, and perhaps the default values will show us if this was a good idea or not. Do you know, it just goes really well with the rest of the puffiness of the shirt. Makes me wonder if we should have more sharing at the top. If they should just continue here. I think it just fits in nicely. It's just puffy. It's nice. And we don't get to see these, these uh, fitting issues at the bottom here anymore. It's a puffy shirt for sure. Oh, that is exciting. Uh, can I just go and add another nifty little line up here? Is that possible? Can we just go and offset as internal line and just go this time we don't want, we just want one? Yeah, I think one, that's cool. Let's add another one. All right. On which we also employ a bit of elasticity. See what that looks like. So we have an extra line at the top here that could be could be bad <laughs> yeah i don't know if that was necessary or not i might actually just try to undo that and perhaps just offset these lines here it's another interesting idea oh actually everyone who's into 3d content purchases i've heard something today that uh, was a little bit of a shock well let's not do that that's that's terrible a bit of a shock namely that hivewire are closing their doors the store hivewire 3d are closing their doors it's kind of that was a bit of a i wouldn't say a shock to me I was always wondering how they, um, how it works for them selling 3D content. I don't know if you know about Hivewire, but they were, they are, uh, were a content marketplace, much like Daz and Renderosity and back in the day Runtime DNA, when Runtime DNA still existed. And they had, they were founded by people who used to work for Daz. And one guy, Chris Creek, he was made redundant 
his partner Lisa from Lisa's Botanicals. She was uh, she was a content creator, and together they had a good thing going. But there somehow the company have changed their mind and didn't want didn't want for them to be there anymore, whatnot, and uh, decided they uh, Chris needed to go. So Chris then together with Lisa and uh, and someone else whose name I've forgotten, they've set up the um, the uh, Hive Y 3D and said, okay, look, uh, this whole Posa Das Studio fragmentation is big. It's big for the industry. We're going to try and make one figure that we're going to rig well for Posa as well as Das Studio. So we're not going to have one figure that we kind of try to squeeze into the other app. We're going to have the same base figure, but rig it differently so that it works both in Posa natively and in Das Studio natively. And that's the Dawn figure, Dawn and Dusk. And I thought that was that was a very nice idea. I'm, I thought this was this was great, but they never really took off. So Dawn and Dust, they they in their default states, they look a little bit like Victoria Two, and Michael Two, and but the idea was, hey, you can customize this with morphs and all kinds of other cool stuff. And you know, the, the thing is, uh, they're working on Dawn Two now and Dusk Two, so that is in the works, but it won't be released at Hivewire anymore. So they 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 had already tested the waters a few years ago putting their content up for sale, especially the animal products, at Renderosity. And um, that worked well. And I suppose they now made the decision to say, hey, look, running a marketplace by ourselves is massive overhead. I can, I don't know what the sales figures are, but them closing kind of suggests not good is probably the answer. Uh, and they decided it's probably an easier option to let Renderosity take a cut they do the sales and we focus on making content. But what that means is many content creators were going there exclusively and people like 3D Universe have done content for Hivewire. I supposed to test the waters and um, they stopped doing that after a couple of products. I used to be a Hivewire vendor, vendor myself in addition to the products at Renderosity. But uh, I think I made zero sales over a course of two years. So. <laughs> They, in fact, contacted me and said, look, Jay, your products are so bad. Please keep them. We're going to pull them. It's not what they said, but <laughs> you know what I mean. So, yes, no more Hivewire. If they have another sale on there, but it's um, it'll it'll close its doors on the 4th of January. <laughs> I need your opinions, my friends. What do you think about the sharing at the top? I feel it needs something, but I don't know if this is the way. I can try to do this parallel to the bottom. See if that looks like. This this looks eerily good. I might play with the with the values now, the elastic values here. Let me see if I can come up with a clever way of selecting all of these. No, of course I can't. That'd be too easy, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'll have to go and select them manually. I wish you could save selections in Marvelous Designer. That'd be cool. At least I only have to select this half. And now I'll go and... Head over here and see... What I do with the elasticity. So maybe the ratio, I might crank that up more. See what 100 looks like. Oh, that relaxes it. Okay, cool. Let's go and try 60. 60 gathers it a bit stronger. That's nice. And then the strength itself, let me ch change that from 10 to 20, just to see what happens. It doesn't do much. Okay, we'll put that back to 10 and be done with it. That's cool. 60, maybe I'll do 40. See what that does. That, that does, that's too much. I think I'll leave it at 60. I think 60 is even too much. I think maybe the, the default values were quite nice. I might like just leave that at 80, which was the default. And now I'm going to go and try and increase the particle distance just for the shirt. In fact, just for the sleeves and for the back. And then that'll they'll just make more room for geometry of more wrinkles. Let's try that. So the whole back, that's this. And then the sleeves, which are, well, let's go and select whole patterns. This one, this, and that. Uh, 
there we could could use the front as well because that that's kind of crinkly and puffy at the bottom too so let's go and do that and that as well and in fact let's just do the whole top there we go <laughs> the whole thing in fact we should also where's the where's the collar they look selected but i'm not sure if it is now it's selected oh that's where it is it's that internal line good good well essentially all of this boom perfect so then particle distance is down here that's under simulation properties and as red always means there's a value that's not set overall white means it's the same value overall red means it's some most pieces have 20 but some have a different value which i can't see so i have a feeling that's probably the sleeves that i've already tried here so i might go and put that all to 10 and that'll subdivide the whole mesh now and we'll see if that settles things down it stops simulating let's go simulate again there we go that is a much much nicer effect now and it also looks closer to what I was hoping it was going to look like. This shriveled at the back and it just improves the fit here. The bottom bit is not elastic. That's I'd like to keep it that way. Or at least just maybe make the maybe make the outside elastic that it has a better fit. But I think I don't think I will do that. Alrighty. It's, I'm tempted to try the elastic effect on the on this part here as well. Just see what that looks like. And then we can keep pulling things and see if that if we can if we can find the perfect fit. Let's try. So that that's then this the, just this line or both lines i can't tell maybe both lines let's try uh, not this line okay this is exciting i always like this figuring new things out and hoping for the best pick these two and elastic is here Let's put it on and leave the default values and see what happens when we go and simulate this. Oh, it's already simulated. There we go. That's actually, that's kind of what I was hoping it would do. It just pulls the whole, um, the whole, whatever this is, the kind of the collar, I guess, together. This is a bit too much, actually. I like for that to be relaxed a bit. And then we can even see if this might also fit on the on the other uh, Genesis avatar. And it'll also we'll probably see it better when I put a, a color on this or even a material. Because light yellow on white with a light background. I love the fact that this is already imperfect at the back here. That's that's fantastic. That's great. It's very realistic. I like that. This is uh, just a measurement on her. But nice. So you can go and see if we can tame the beast, as Travis says. Travis Davids. He's got some very nice Marvelous Designer tutorials on his channel. One of them just kind of went up fairly recently about the new features of Marvelous Designer. Do you know, perfect. This is better than I had than I had thought was going to turn out. That is really cool. Let's try a color on this material here. We also we have two materials. I'm not sure what is where. We'll find out. This is one thing I really like about Clo, the Pantone color palettes. I'm gonna have to just go grab that. So these are the trousers here. We 
it's almost good aside from the saturation. And we can also make it a bit darker. Something like that, like a warm khaki type thing. Something something like this, just with less with less saturation essentially. That'd be good. So these are, let me just go and call this one uh, shorts. That's almost true for most of them, except for these two pieces. So I'm gonna go and assign those in a moment. And then this is gonna be the other pattern. And that's, uh, I'll call that the top shirt, maybe, shirt. And that, what might go well with this color Perhaps not green, and perhaps that, that's nice. It's kind of a beige type outfit, that's cool. I even like the accents of the trousers here, even though I, I will change that. So it's this one and that, what is, where is that? Well, that is actually for the trousers. So let me go and put that further down. Where's the counterpart for that? I wonder. I wonder if it's underneath here somewhere. Somewhere hiding. There. See? That. I wanted to put that here. And then just put this back here. And the sleeves go next to the shirt. Just so as a visual reference. It really doesn't matter where they are. It does, however, matter the way they are. Uh, the way they are rotated affects the the cloth grain that I didn't know either. That was interesting for me. So this one and that one and assign that. Assign. Boom. There. I think now we have all of that. This pokes through a little bit here. But yes, with pocket particle distance 10, this looks this looks nice. I, I'm, I'm happy about this. Much like fitting in real life, you just you just if it's if things fit badly, you just put elastic in it. Great, <laughs> I love it. Okay, so um, I think let me try and have a crack at some top stitching. Then that might be nice. So I'm thinking just along this line here, not so much on the outlines here, but on the front and the back around here, and perhaps the sleeves here, and perhaps. Um, perhaps here. I'm thinking that might be cool. Edit top stitch here. This is what I was what I was kind of hoping to find. So there, there's two versions here, segment free and seam line top stitch. The best one I found was the free top stitch. It also, the, so the, the segment top stitch does much like what the segment sewing does. And it literally goes and does apply sewing on one part but if that if you had then have an intersecting line it then sometimes it doesn't really work or goes too crazy whereas the free one you can avoid such intersections where you see well i i'm not sure if i wanted to have stitches that that intersect with one another we can try them all out and see what we want to do i'll use segment top stitch first and i think i can do that in 3d as well no i can't I can in 3D I can have a look at where that is. So this is that line here, the two internal lines. I'll do those first. It's actually up to me where I apply them here or here. I'll try that. That applies. Whoops, I'm totally zoomed in, I'm sorry. That totally applies that stitching. And we can see if we like it. So maybe we needed that stitching more here. Can even have it lots of places. Can have this is very decorative. Kind of accentuates that um, that the the whole the whole shape the whole V shape. Oh, it does. Oh. See, this is interesting. So you have the ratio slider bug, but you don't have the right click bug. Ooh. 
Interesting. Christina on Christina's system, both things are solved. And on my system, both things are broken. Kind of a program is this? It's it's a bit it's held together with a piece of string, isn't it? So in this case, segment top stitch was quite nice. Let's see what we can do at the back. I suppose I follow suit in the back. And do one here. There it is. And another one here. And another one here. Yeah, triple stitching. I like it. Very nice. I don't think we'll go over the top with all of these stitches everywhere. I'm not sure about these parts here, the little sleeves. I'll, I'll try what happens. This is them. It's always good to have a look at uh, if you pick a point in the 3D world, it becomes a blue dot on the 2D pattern. So in this case, I'm not sure which one the outside and which one the inside is. So I'll click on the outside here and then I can see that this is the outside. This is where I thought I'm going to try that stitching. See what it's like. Yeah, it looks nice. Very good. Perfect. Let's try that on the other side as well. Oh, it actually is symmetric, so it has done that properly. Haha. <laughs> awesome. Very nice. So down here then. I don't even know what pattern that was. That here. And again, the outside is down here. Top stitch free is essentially uh, the same, but you can start anywhere inside a pattern and stop anywhere inside a pattern. That's that's quite nice. And then we need the other side, probably that. Perfect. We've got stitches. Great. And then so the default top stitch that at the top here, that is a bit like the material. This is now the material for the top stitch at the top right here. And I can go and change that if I'm not happy with the type of stitching. If I want that to be different color, different type of stitch. That is also cool. Let's see if we can change that and just have a quick look at what what our options are here. So default top stitch, you can rename that just like material and clone and you can diff give different seam lines, different type of stitching. So stitching is much like sewing lines or even patterns and stuff like that. They are objects and you can you can um, rename them if you want. Default top stitch. So that's down here. There's something like the shape of the stitch. I can change the length and the spacing and all that. I can literally the the what it looks like. So let me try a bar tack. It's probably going to look weird. And it'll think about it for a second. But then all the stitches look like that. So bar tack, obviously, you wouldn't use that on the outside. But it, this is still the same stitching. It's just changed the, the way it applies it. So it's also um, good to know that when you export this, this gets exported as geometry. So this is not a texture effect. This is actual geometry. So this also tells me this is quite dense. So bar tack, I wouldn't use bar tack on here as well. So buttonhole, that's another uh, stitch overlock. Let's try that. Yes, Rod, absolutely. That is a very good point. We need to keep that in mind. And if there are a few mistakes, hey, it's still software that, like you say, this wasn't even this wasn't even available for people like you and me. <laughs> That's a nice stitch. <laughs> very decorative. And probably not for my garment, but it's lovely to know that that is in fact, that that exists. This is overlock. Then we have the pick stitch. Let's try that. Try pick stitch. It's almost like the one that I had before. The single. Let's try single. That's single stitch. And then you have zigzag. Yeah, almost then the stitching becomes a feature 
of the dress. So I could I could potentially see that maybe I wanted that up here at the top, but I don't want it at the bottom so I can then have this in a different type of stitch. I think I might just go back to the to the default that it was. I think that was the pick stitch. Or maybe make that make that just uh, less spaced out. I might do I might just use was that single? I think single that was the less spaced out version. And that is now not spaced out enough. So maybe if I compare the pick stitch and the single in regards to spacing, this is 1 0.16 on the pick stitch and the single is zero. So maybe I'll just make that 0.1. That'll space that out a bit more. And maybe I'll make it, can I make it smaller? Can I make it 0 0.05? Does that work here? It does. There we go. That's closer together. Alrighty. That's my stitch, man, and I'm sticking to it. So I think buttons, you can place them freely, I think. And you do that with this here, with the button tool. There are some abnormal seam lines in the file marked as red. They, there may be overlapped seam lines. Uh, okay. Good, good to know. This is the kind of decorative button thing I was actually thinking of. So complete free placement. Just put. I don't. I don't need this to open. I just want this to be decorative. Something like that. Three buttons like that. It's perfect. It's exactly what I was thinking. And the size is also not weird. That's just. That's just why. What I think is a cool idea. <laughs> I suppose you could make it really clever and make sure this this opens at this line, and then overlaps so the buttons can actually open if you want it and they they don't just hang there on a uh, on the cloth there's actually a buttonhole in the other piece and then there's another piece of cloth underneath it and the button goes through that and the way I'm thinking about it is actually a very cool idea <laughs> 5 bucks that's a good idea rod but I don't know if that is within my capabilities. I might just leave them here to remind me that that's the design I'm I'm interested in. So let me go put some stitching on the on the trousers as well. Trousers on the shorts rather. Shorts are still um, particle distance particle density of twenty, I think. And then we'll try and export all this and see if I can make this come to life in Blender. This might, that might be nice. So um, seam lines. I'm thinking similar at, as the t-shirt. I'd like to have these at the top here. Maybe even on both these pieces. So that's one is here and the other one. Ah, right, this is a good example of why uh, I've got that extra point in the middle. And the segment here causes this thing now to uh, not be continuous. So I'm not sure if I like that. And I think there's a way to maybe make that different with the uh, with the free sewing, or with the, sorry, with the free top stitch. So I'll go remove that first of all. And then I'll go free top stitch and I'll just go from here all the way to here and now I have this line continue so that looks a bit better in my opinion and then this is which piece oh that's that cool so we need to go use free top stitch from here to there as well there and then I guess we can use it on the top here as well Oops. Oh, that's the arm. <laughs> Crazy. And then we go from here, this point, to all the way here. It's so much fun to do this. I have so much fun just doodling around in this. And at the back, we also have stitches that are continuous. That's quite nice. 
I think that's all I need here. Oh yeah, maybe the bottom. Much like I have done that at the uh, with the sleeves. So where are those then? Oh, they're there. I'm still debating where to put that. Maybe just on here then? From here to there? Yeah, maybe just there. I spoke to Biscuits recently. She is also having lots of fun with Marvelous Desire. And she has... She's making a dress right now. And... Yeah, I think just one one stitch line is probably fine. And uh, she was... When we spoke, she was at the JCM stage. Which is the least, the least exciting part. Pockets is another challenge. We can leave that for another day. Yeah, pockets that go... You cut this bit out here, I think. From here to there. But you leave a piece behind it. So you'd have to insert something here. That would be the pocket. And then you have a you have a thing here. So that that's, that's advanced. I don't think I can do that yet. But there. Stitches, buttons. Oh yeah, button materials. Do we need to worry about the button materials? That might be nice. Make them blend in buttons. Thread type. Oh, we have button types as well. There's uh, cross buttons and there's also parallel buttons. It's the stitching on the buttons that's different. That is so funny. That's parallel, this is cross. Literally depending where the how the how the threads go what else can we do square oh yeah excellent <laughs> no i like cross cross was nice let's do cross and then there's the the actual type here as well glass leather metal let's make it metal woohoo metal buttons <laughs> nice we can also change you switch our amazement viewport shading on here what else we got Fabric matte was the default. Fabric velvet. It's probably not good for buttons, but perhaps glass. Ooh, transparent. I like. How about plastic? I mean, plastic looks like... No, let's make it metal buttons. I like the metal buttons. There's also leather buttons. Which is probably not gonna... We're not gonna see that, are we? <laughs> metal it is. Gives our metallicity map something to do, I'm thinking. So I suppose before I export that, I should assign on my materials here, I should assign some textures. So currently these are just flat colors. They're not uh, textures. So I'll, I'll pick something. Khaki 2 is the color of choice. We can always change that. I was wondering if there's a way to, to just... Uh, copy my color value or maybe just add it here that's a nice idea as well there that's this color just wanted to add that to the palette and then the same with the shorts there so this is the two colors at the bottom that i'm because when i'm dragging a material on here it's gonna it's gonna lose its its thing and of course, then comes the big question, what material shall we use on this? <laughs> Woven cotton, I don't know, do you have any uh, preferences? Woven cotton with more weight? Gabardine cotton? So these materials, they're not just textures. If I drag this over to any of these things, they actually change the properties of the default fabric. So the, the, uh, a material preset is for Marvelous Designer is the maps as well as the color. You can take the color out, but it's also the properties of the fabric. So denim will behave differently than cotton and leather will behave differently than nylon and all that. So that is to be considered. 
Oh, fluffy. Knit. So that's something I'm, I may just, I don't know, maybe I will just... This wool. I might try just cotton gabardine. And just see, see what that's like. We've got, have we saved everything? I think we have. Let's go save the project. Puffy. I, st I still misspelled it. It says puffy short v3. It's shirt, my man. <laughs> Let me save it one more time. No, 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 not that. Save as. Oh my god. Oh. J saves. It's another <laughs> exciting episode. Save as. There we go. Oh my. Yeah, neither can I. Puffy shirt version 4 now, right? 4, yes, perfect. It's a shirt. Man. <laughs> Something we can go back to. And the whole thing is kind of hooked up to real garments as well. That is crazy. I've checked out the closet yesterday. That was interesting. So cotton gabardine. Let me put that on the shirt. That looks quite nice, actually, I must say. <laughs> and I'll put the same thing on the shorts. And I'll also go and just rename that again to shirt. And this is the shorts. And so the colors are easy to, uh, to bring back. There's this thing under texture, so this is the thing we're really after, that, so that it makes it look like, um, you know, like something. You can add a color, in, in our case this is white anyway, so I can just put a color in here. But if this had a color, like the jeans material would be blue, I can go under the texture thing and just desaturate that. It's not going to make a difference for, for me here, but it makes a small difference. But if I do that, then it essentially takes the whole color out of it and you can put your own color in it so if you if you only have a material that is uh, whatever blue denim and you'd like it to be red you click the desaturate button that makes it white denim and then you pick on the bottom here under color you just pick a different color so i'm gonna go and use my uh, my green and that'll leave the texture intact but add my green. So if we zoom in, I can now see there's a little bit of a pattern in here. Not much, so it's, it's probably not the best to to use. It probably won't even show up in the render. But I just thought, you know, I'll I'll do it that way, and we'll see if it if it works in principle. So this color, then, that's the brown. I'll do that. This probably I could have probably used denim on this. Maybe I will actually do that. Maybe they're kind of more denim shorts. Let's do that. Denim raw. Let's do that. Drag that over to the shorts. Denim raw. And I can show you this, what I was just talking about. So this is now black because that's just what, what that raw denim looks like. And I can also go and rename that once again into shorts. <laughs> and then under uh, texture here, I can go and desaturate that now. And that'll make the, that'll take the black out and just leave um, essentially the, the texture and in color I can go and pick my brown and then I still have the material properties of the denim but I now also have the texture of the denim which is kind of nice if it behaves like it's supposed to we will see in a moment I think I'm gonna go and make the particle distance uh, 10 as I promised earlier And then we'll go and do a bit of simulation. I just hope that it doesn't change the look and feel of my fabric too much. Because it now drapes differently than before. Yeah, so now there's, there's less sharing than I remember. It's a lighter uh, fabric, I guess, than the default fabric, but I'm still happy with it. So I won't, I won't, I'm not going to change it. It's, I can, I'm happy with it. I'm living with it. Mm -hmm. 
I've destroyed the fabric. <laughs> I've also destroyed the button placement. It's probably attached to an awkward uh, piece of cloth here. I might redo that button. You can even, apparently, you can say how heavy the buttons are. Oh, there we go, it kind of works. And then if they're heavy, they they literally drag this down. That's something else that's interesting to explore. And like you say, Rod, it's all based on maths. It's <laughs> interesting, isn't it? I'm just trying to get rid of this fold here. Oh! oh Christina! Okay. Interesting. This is also what I love about streams like this, that we actually get get to um, get to figure these things out together come up with solutions together maybe this is unavoidable maybe it's just it's just the way it looks <laughs> Well, it's a puffy shirt. It's allowed to be crinkly everywhere. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Oops. But this is nice for morphs as well. If you wanted to have a morph that you have uh, in your figure that, uh, that you want one shoulder off, for example, you could just freeze the simulation or just stop the simulation and uh, and export this OBJ and export, import that as a morph slider. And then you can go and uh, restart the simulation and just go uh, keep fiddling. Whoops. Well, I have to go fiddle my way back now because that was not my intention. There we go. Yeah, okay, I think I'm happy. I think I'm happy. I, this was the, the back was what I was going to try out and that looks really nice. Exactly what I was going for. Okay then, well, let's try if I can remember Christina's super awesome tips and see if I can bring these two pieces into Blender and uh, turn it into a nice render. Let's see if we can make it happen. <laughs> 